Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Cretan and welcome back to episode number 9 of our Minecraft Let's Play series. Now, I am having to record this little bit of an intro again. I had some audio problems, so I ended up getting a little bit of work done on today's task. But not like enough to where, you know, everything is sort of messed up. Ooh, and I got a little bit of a lag spike right there. I don't think that my game really likes all of the kelp and everything, but I wanted to start over by the ocean today because I wanted to show you guys this little platform that I built out here. And basically, if you can't already tell, this is a tree farm. I made this on stream. I streamed last Monday, so today is the 11th. So whatever day was previously Monday, uh, if that makes any sense. But I, I built a little tree farm and I harvested, what is it, 16, so there's 16 trees, so that's 32. I harvested 32 uh, mega spruce trees. I got all of the wood. And if you guys remember from the last episode, we worked on this super smelter. So I got an absolute ton of coal, of charcoal smelted up rather, and now we now we're gonna have you know enough fuel for this thing for at least at least a little while for at least a decent amount of time which i'm super excited about now i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about sort of like the symbiotic relationship between my youtube videos and my twitch stream so if you guys haven't been able to tell within the last uh i would say three or four episodes or so I have actually been doing a lot of Twitch streams in between episodes, and I find that actually to be very, very uh, helpful, you know, before I end up recording an episode. I find it very, very helpful to either get a ton of resources mined out or built up or whatever, or, you know, get some stuff prepared beforehand for this next step for the next episodes that I do. So the plan is, is that after every episode that comes out on the YouTube series, I am going to stream either that night. If the episode comes out in the morning, I'm going to be streaming that night. Or if the episode comes out in the nighttime, then I will more than likely be streaming the next day. And of course, always down below in the description is the link to my Twitter and the link to my Twitch where you can learn. If you know, if you go follow those, it'll, it'll say, hey, you know, I'm streaming right now. And I do stream usually at least once a week, but I am trying to get a little bit more into streaming. I, I actually think it's a really fun thing. The last stream that we did, I mean, I had a good time with the, the four or five people that were watching. And it's always a fun time. So if anybody wants to come hang out, that's always a, a thing. But that's basically all I have to say about, you know, the stream versus YouTube. YouTube, I want to mainly focus on like a lot of the building a lot of like the actual like sort of the meat of Minecraft is is one would one perhaps might call it and I want to on stream more focus on like a lot of the the grindy work I want to focus on you know getting resources or um, for instance the last two streams that I did we mined out this entire area down here and I got it all prepared and everything and this is actually where we're going to be working on our next episode or well on our next episode on this episode rather is we're going to be working on this and you might be looking at it and thinking what is this and i know i've talked about it before but this is actually the start of a villager breeder i have everything laid out and i kind of want to just get everything all started and all done in today's episode so we can then you know move forward and everything so in this chest here we have basically all of the resources that we're going to need. I'm going to put these shears in here for right now. We have all of these resources that we're basically going to need for this villager breeder. So I am going to show you guys how to build it. Or at least I'm going to attempt to show you guys how to build it. If it's not done perfectly, the original tutorial will be in the description below this is a design by impulse sv um some of you guys may know who he is he is a member i'm not sure if he's a member currently of season seven but he is an avid member of the uh hermitcraft series and he's you know just an all-around great minecraft youtuber and this is his design so i'm going to put the link to that design in the description below and if you guys want to check it out 
and actually watch the proper tutorial, then it'll be down there. But we're going to get started on this thing. So basically, we need to put a slab down. And I'm going to just torch up a little bit for right now. But we'll get the lighting put down really, really quick. And basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go out nine in each direction. So that's four, six, eight, nine. We're going to go out nine in each direction. And then now that we have everything in each direction going out nine, we sort of make like this T shape on both sides or rather on all four sides. And then we're going to fill out this entire area. So we're going to connect these T shapes together sort of like this. And then we're going to fill out this entire area. We're going to fill it all of the way with dirt. So to recap what we did, we put a hole in the middle and then from the middle point, we went out nine on each side. We made this sort of T shape and then we connected everything and then we filled everything in with dirt. So that's how we got this little shape that we have right now. And then the next thing is we need some sort of lighting block. And in Impulse's design, he was using sea lanterns. He also says you can use glowstone, but, ooh, I messed up. But you can also use jack-o'-lanterns if that is what you need. And I can't actually use, um, you know, glowstone or sea lanterns yet because I neither, I don't have a guardian farm or a glowstone. But basically, or, or access to the nether, rather. But what we want to do is you're going to put your lighting blocks on the outside of the this three area three long area right here you're going to skip a block and then you're going to do another lighting block and then you're going to do the same thing on each side so you're going to put the oh i messed up i put that in the wrong spot you're going to put the lighting block on the outside of this dirt right here and then skip a block so there's a block empty here and then you put a lighting block right here and then lighting block lighting block Lighting block, lighting block, and then you notice that there is one, two blocks in between that are missing, and that's done on purpose. And then we put a lighting block here, and lighting block here. And then I think we need one more right here, yep. So we got all of the lighting blocks put in. Now the next thing that we can do is we can actually start putting in our sort of water blocks. So we have our lighting blocks on these edges right here. And basically we want to put down stairs and we want to put them sort of in this fashion. We're going to put stairs on each corner in between each of these single space pumpkins. Just like that. And now that we have all of our stairs placed in, we can actually place trap doors on the sides of the stairs and this is going to prevent the stairs or the water we're going to put water in here and it's going to prevent the water from coming out so we'll put uh, the trap doors on each side of the stairs and then this is where we put all of our water so we got, are going to put water right in the center block and then we're going to put water in each of these little stair stair bits right here so i'm going to do i'm going to fill all of the water in real quick all right, so now we have all of the water placed and we're, like I said, we're putting the water in these stair blocks on each of these stair blocks. And then we're also putting water in the middle. So at this point you can hoe or till the entire ground if you want. But first what I want to do is actually let's make some stone bricks. And we are just going to put some stone bricks on the outside of this whole thing, sort of on the empty blocks if you will and then whatever side is going to be the quote-unquote front of your villager breeder or alternatively wherever you want your villagers to go we will not be placing the three blocks so i want actually this spot to be my front so we can just you know not have any blocks right there and then the next thing that we can do is we can actually start placing glass down everywhere so we can just go too high and we want to go too high on the outside 
of this entire thing. And you can notice that I actually built this in a way so it's exactly two blocks high uh, down from the ceiling. All right, so we got all of our glass placed and again, this little front area, and sorry about all of the noises, apparently there's a wandering trader upstairs somewhere. Um, but this outside, or this front area where our villagers are going to be, you know, doing the breeding, we aren't going to put any blocks and there's going to be no glass right here. So at this point, what we can do is we can actually, oh, I'm, I'm so bad apparently, we can put our composter right there and then we can also just put a light block on top. And you want to put the light block on top to make sure that the, obviously he can't actually jump up and jump in this because of the ceiling. But if you're building this, you know, in an open area or where the ceiling is, you know, three or four blocks high or there is no ceiling, then you want to put a light block right here to make sure that the villager can't jump into the composter and then not do his job. Also, you want the light block right here to make sure that any of these empty spaces get lit up. So at this point, we can actually get rid of all of these torches. And then what we can do is we can just start hoeing this entire thing. So I'm going to till out this entire area. And just in case anybody's wondering, it's almost exactly an entire iron hoe to till out this entire area. But now that we got this whole area mined out, we can actually just jump down. And I have scaffolding over there. I should have built it over here. That would have been smarter. But what we can do at this point, actually first, we need to plant our, our vegetables. Now, you can start doing this with either carrots or potatoes. I'm pretty sure that you can use both carrots and potatoes at the same time, but it should be more efficient to just use only one type. So use only carrots or use only potatoes, you know, so that way the villager inventories aren't getting filled with two different types of, of uh, vegetables. And then you have to wait for them to get the proper stacks and everything. I would recommend only using the one type of vegetable. Personally, for me, I'm going to be using carrots, so that way, uh, and, and you guys will see in a minute, but this villager breeder also acts sort of as a sort of AFK potato or carrot farm, depending on which vegetable you choose. But I, in the future, do plan on having, you know, like a gold farm, I think would be pretty cool, and to have a ton of carrots in reserve, and then get a gold farm. You know, we could just have the best food in the game for the rest of our, our gameplay. So maybe eventually one day, one, one person can dream. But the next thing we can do is we can actually drop down and I'm gonna make a, a scaffolding. And for some reason, I'm missing one. Oh, found it. I'm gonna just make a little scaffolding like right here. That'll give us, oh, it can go one more high. That'll give us at least a little bit easier access to this. Now, what we want to do is we can first place, you know, if I had better inventory management, first we can place some temporary blocks right here. Maybe. Okay, please, after that little fiasco, we want to place some temporary blocks right here. And then we are going to put this too high. We're going to put glass right here. And then we're going to take one of our trap doors and we're just going to put it on the top. So that way the villager can't actually walk out. And then we can get rid of these two temporary blocks. And then we want to place a block right here. And this is going to be temporary. But we are going to put trap doors I think I would like them to be placed on the top we're gonna place trap doors <laughs> it's very scary doing the scaffolding thing along this whole thing and then we can get rid of this block and then if we come down here we're gonna have to do a little bit of finagling but what we want to do at this point is we want to place some more temporary blocks so we're gonna just place a little ring around this trapdoor box, if you will. And then we're gonna take our beds, which I need to go grab them. We're gonna take our beds, and then you wanna make sure that the pillows are in the corner 
of this whole thing. So actually, I need to break this bed and place there first so I don't get stuck underneath the glass. You want to make sure that the pillows are in the corners of this little platform. So place a bed, place a bed, and then bed. And then that's what we need to do. And then we can get rid of these temporary blocks. Actually, what we want to do first is we want to put a fence block right here. And then we get rid of these temporary blocks. So basically, this fence block is what the uh, breeding villagers are going to stand on. All right, and then what we can do is we can actually place a little platform right under here. And then we can get rid of these two blocks. And we are going to put our chest right here. And we're going to put our hopper right into it. So whenever anything drops into here, then, you know, we'll get we'll get carrots down here. And then what we can do is we can actually just place this whole thing encased with glass. And then lastly, what we want to do is we want to put some slabs on top of this whole thing on top of this little glass enclosure. And that way, so when the baby villagers are born, we're not going to, they're not going to accidentally get, get pushed on top of the glass. They're going to go right in to this little chamber right here. Now, alternatively, what you could do is we can get, actually get rid of these corner blocks, which I think I'm going to do that. Because what we are going to be able to do in the future is, and I don't think that I'm going to do it right now, but we will be able to set up sort of like a minecart track that would come, I believe, right on this level. If we set up a minecart track, it'll just pick up a villager one by one and it'll be easy peasy. But I'm super excited about this. The next thing that we have to do is we actually have to get villagers down here. So the best kind of villager to put down here is jobless villagers you want to make sure that when you put villagers in here i'm not exactly sure if the green villagers which i believe minecraft calls them plebs but that also might just be what the community calls them but i'm going to call them plebs a green shirt villager can't have a job so you want to find a brown shirt villager and i'm not exactly sure if the green shirt or pleb villagers i'm not exactly sure if they can breed um, I'm sure that, you know, many other people would know more ab about that than me, but what I would recommend is making sure that you get three brown shirt villagers that don't have a job and you haven't locked their trades with them. Now, when you trade with a villager, if you, you know, find a new villager and you trade with it, then it's trades get locked and it can't have any other profession. So then... You know, they become kind of useless for this. We want, you know, a, a villager that doesn't have a job so he can become a farmer and work up here. And then two villagers that don't have jobs, you know, they can, these two villagers in here that we're going to put in here, they can have a, you know, they can have a job. They still breed and everything. Um, but it would kind of just be a waste. I think I'm going to do this. I think that looks cool. I think, I think this looks really cool. But the next thing that we need to do is we need to get some villagers in here. And then this thing is going to basically be done. We need to sort of wait for the carrots to start growing. But I'm going to get three villagers put down here. And which is going to take a minute. It's always a pain to get villagers down somewhere. But going to get this done. We're going to get the villagers down here. And then, and then you know... We're going to have a villager breeder, which is super awesome. So I'm going to work on that real quick, and then I'll meet back with you guys when that's done. All right. So realistically, the best way to transport villagers is literally one at a time, and you can either do it by boat or by minecart. I had originally thought about doing it by minecart, but I feel like with the way that I had everything set up, doing it by boat was just a little easier. And actually, now that I look at it, I think we're just going to... 
build a little house around this guy and then hope that he just goes into the minecart. All right, so let's talk the mechanics of the villager breeder. Now, this is a relatively simple farm, but it does require you to do a couple of things. First off, you want to make sure that if you are sort of changing some of the different game rules and you are changing just sort of the way that the game is played, you want to make sure that mob griefing is turned to true. I know that a lot of players, myself included, I like to turn mob griefing to false. Because basically that means that Enderman can't pick up blocks and if a creeper explodes he's not going to ruin your stuff. But villager, farmer villagers use the same mechanics as, you know, creepers and, and Endermen to, you know, affect the environment. So you need to make sure that mob griefing is set to true. So that way the farmer villager can actually harvest the carrots and pick them up and whatnot. Now I want to talk about one thing. When we were building this, you saw that I only had four carrots. I only used four. You can start this entire thing with just one carrot. As long as you have the villagers, you have the farmer villager, and you have the two um, breeding villagers, you can start this entire thing with just one carrot. But basically what has to happen in order for them to start breeding is the farmer villager needs to plant this entire thing with uh, carrots, this entire field with carrots. He wants to do that first. And then what he's going to do is he's going to fill his personal inventory up a little bit more. You see how he's kind of coming over here and looking at the other villagers. I believe that this is a new mechanic with the 1.14 where villagers are like more social with one another. That's sort of how the breeding mechanics work. Um, basically what he's going to do is like I was saying is he's going to get about four stacks of carrots in his own personal inventory. And then once he gets that many carrots, he's going to start throwing more and more carrots onto these villagers. And basically what he's going to do is, at least if I'm correct, which I want to mention real quick, that this is only stuff that I've sort of either learned from YouTube videos or I've sort of, you know, observed myself. So I could be wrong on some of the numbers and I could be a little wrong on some of like the mechanics and everything. But basically, each villager needs around four stacks of food or so or something like that for them to, you know, start breeding. I could be wrong about that statistic, by the way. So don't quote me on it. But basically, what we can do to sort of, you know, stimulate this villager's economy is I ended up breeding up or a bone mealing rather some carrots. So if we plant this entire thing or as much as we can with carrots, then... The villager isn't going to have to do as much work. And then all we're simply going to have to do is wait. We're just going to have to wait for the villagers to start filling up their inventories. And then they will eventually start breeding, which is super awesome. One other thing that you can do, which I'm not going to, I don't believe I'm going to have enough carrots. I might. We'll see at the end of this. But one other thing that you can do is you can actually just throw food at the villagers and then once they get enough food they will start breeding amongst themselves and that's actually like the super simplest way of breeding villagers you don't even have to have this whole setup you can literally just have like a wheat field that you you know turn all of the wheat into bread and then you throw bread at two villagers and they'll they'll always breed after they get enough bread but this whole setup is super super simple super interesting it requires no redstone and the farmer villager will eventually start throwing food at the two villagers down there. And then we don't have to worry about, you know, harvesting our own food. We don't have to worry about that. They are just going to do it amongst themselves. Now, the statistics of this mob farm, according to Impulse, and again, he is the one that is has made this farm, has designed this farm. So I will be posting the link to that video in the description. But according to him, you can get six, it's either six or 12 villagers per hour. I forget exactly which it is. I'm going to have to look at that real quick and I will try to, you know, post something on the screen right now that says what it is, but it's either six or 12 villagers per hour. Now, 
You can see that this villager is sleeping right now. He, they will not breed in the nighttime. So in order to get the maximum amount of villagers bred, you need to be sleeping every single night. But it's also not like a super big deal to, uh, you know, just sleep, not sleep through the nighttime because you'll still get villagers and you know, this will still just run in the background and everything passively. And uh, it turns out that the villager decided to grow some wheat. So we're just going to replace that with carrots. But one thing that we should be able to do, we should be able to throw him some food. And he should pick it up. And then he's going to start filling up his inventory. Now what we should be able to do is we should be able to throw carrots at these guys. And you might be able to hear that sound. It's like them ticking and they're going to eat and ooh, they might breed right now. But they're going to need to start eating some more food. And once they eat enough food, then they'll start saving some in their inventory. And and, and who knows? Maybe, maybe they'll actually just breed right now. That'd be super awesome. But yeah, as you can see, any carrots that they don't catch, they just get dropped down into here. But basically, they, they are going to start breeding soon, which is super awesome. I'm super, super excited about that. This is incredibly awesome. I've never actually built this anything like this before. So I'm super, super excited. Now we may end up losing some of the carrots. So I guess it's not like a 100% efficient farm or anything. But it, this is awesome. This is, I always mess up the scaffolding placement. This is, this is awesome. We're gonna, we're really gonna be able to, to do some awesome things with this because sort of the goal or the end goal I suppose someday is to sort of populate this whole place with with villagers it would be super awesome so eventually we'll get there and this thing is gonna take us there now I'm super excited about this episode as well because the next couple of things that I want to start working on is some automatic farms now, I'm not going to be doing that in this episode, sadly. This is all I want to get done in today's episode. But in the next episode, hopefully, we're going to have, like, I'm kind of planning on having, like, this mega-ish episode where we just get, like, you know, sugar cane and a melon and a pumpkin and, uh, you know, all sorts of different farms. We could just line this whole thing with all sorts of different farms. It'd be super awesome. You see him? He was just throwing some carrots down there. Or he might have been. He, I don't think he did. Maybe he didn't. But this is awesome. I'm super glad that we got this whole thing done. But that's going to be it for me today. So I want to say a couple of things real quick. If the audio in this video sounds a little off, um, I had some issues. I don't know exactly what happened. I think that it might have to do with the fact that I installed a voice changer. I was just trying out a new thing and when I installed everything went fine, I realized that I didn't want it, so I uninstalled it. You know, I had to reset my computer and everything, and I think that that, like, messed up with my settings. And it, like, messed up with my microphone settings. So I've had to, like, go in and, and basically change everything again. So if everything sounds weird in this episode, hopefully by next episode, everything should be fixed. Um, if not, I don't know exactly what's wrong. <laughs> But, you know, what can you do? It seems like every single episode that I make, there's always some sort of issue that I run into. But all I can really do at this point is just move forward and keep and keep doing this. So I'm super excited that this has gotten done today. You know, if you guys if you guys like this or if you guys have any ideas or, you know, if you notice I did something wrong because, you know, this is the first time that I've done this. You know, let me know down below in the comments. I always appreciate when everybody, you know, has something to say. Um... Again, this design was by Impulse. I will put his video in the description because I'm not sure exactly if, you know, I did a good job describing how this thing actually, you know, is built or how it works or anything. And he does a pretty great job of describing it. He also did it in a shorter episode. So there's that. But with that being said, I can't actually shift out of this. Oh, it won't drop me. <laughs> Let's just, can we get out of this all of the way? <laughs> With that being said, though, my name is Mr. Creighton. I appreciate you guys so much for the support and everything. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, bye bye.